Today, I'll show you how to install DeepSeek R1 and use it locally with LM Studio on a MacBook Pro. LM Studio is an easy to use desktop model manager that lets you discover, download and run local LLMs. It runs on Macs with M processors, Windows and Linux. If you visit their website, you'll see on the top right that they're already advertising support for DeepSeek R1. So that's great news. Once you get on the website, the first thing you'll notice is the three buttons on the left. Download for Mac, for Windows, or for Linux. The easiest way to download and install is to click in one of those buttons that applies to your operating system. Once the installation finishes, then you can run it and start browsing the models. But let's take a look at some of the features of LM Studio. For example, it lets you run LLMs on your laptop entirely offline. So you don't have to be connected to any networks. You can run these on a plane. You can run them completely privately, guaranteeing that no information will be sent to any provider. You can chat with your local documents. So it provides a local RAG system similar to GPT for all. So that's really good. In-app chat UI. So the UI is quite nice. The UX is amazing. It supports many GGUF models like Llama, Mistral, Phi, Gemma, Star Coders. Anything you can find on Hugging Face is most likely supported. And there are some minimum requirements like the M processor for Mac and for Windows or Linux, a processor that supports AVX2. The second way how this can be installed is through Homebrew. If you have Homebrew, then you can just run the command brew install minus minus cask lm dash studio. So that's the command. And if you wait a little bit, that will do the installation. In my case, I already had it installed. So if you have it installed, it's not going to do the installation one more time. But once you run this command, LM Studio will also be installed on your MacBook. Now, once LM Studio is installed, you can launch the app. And the first thing you'll see is the chat interface. There are four little icons on the top left. The first yellow one is the chat. Then you have the developer. Then you have the models directory. And lastly, the search icon allows you to search for models. When you first launch LM Studio, you will not have any models installed. So what you need to do is go and find and download the DeepSeek model. You can just go through the buttons and explore the interface. I've already downloaded this. As you can see, the DeepSeek R1, the Steel Quen 7B GGUF model is already downloaded and the size is about four gigabytes. But what you can do is click on the Discover. And once you are in the Discover interface, then either type DeepSeek or just look at the list because it will be at the top. It's a very popular model right now. Everybody's downloading it. In our case, the second model in that window Know, is the DeepSeek R1 Distill Quen. So just click on that and hit the download button. Wait a little bit. It takes a few minutes for the download to finish. And once it's done, it will turn green and say download it. And once the download is complete, then you can navigate to your chat interface and load the model. Right now, what you see on the middle top section of the screen is the model being loaded. It's four gigabytes, so it takes a few seconds to load the model. Once the model is loaded, then you can start chatting with it. And in this case, we're not adding any documents, anything like that. We can just start with a simple hi, just to test whether the model is working or not. So just type any question. I type hi, and if you wait a little bit, and if you get an answer, that means that the model has been installed successfully. Okay, let's run our first question. We have the model installed. We have it loaded to our chat interface. So let's ask a question. So for our first question, we're just going to ask, can you spell the sentence starting a revolution backwards? And let's see how the model does. One thing you'll notice here in the middle is that the thinking block DeepSeek R1 is a reasoning model, which means it breaks the task down and it provides its thinking steps as an output as well. These are just the deliberations of the model. They're not included in the final answer, but that's how the model goes step by step in the chain of thought, breaking down the larger question into smaller questions and then solving each small question and then combining the results into one. So that goes on for a little while. I'm going to skip this because it takes a little longer on my MacBook. Depending on your machine configuration, if you have a GPU, you'll be flying through this, but I don't have a GPU. And therefore, any question takes about anywhere from 60 seconds to two minutes. 
Next question. Let's ask another question. And this time, the question is, why is the sky blue? It's a typical question that's asked of models. And again, here, other models like GPT-40, GPT-40 Mini do not go through this process of breaking down the task into smaller steps and then deliberating through these steps. But here, you can clearly see how the model thinks how it breaks down the question, how it compiles different sources or nodes inside the model. Currently, the model is not using any tool, so it's not going online or do performing any searches. This is a completely local execution. And now with the light blue font, it's giving the answer and the reasons why the sky is blue. That's another really, really good example of a reasoning model in action. Let's move on and ask another question. This one, is a little bit more around the reasoning. And I'll talk about some of the ways you can utilize reasoning models and how they're different than functional models. This question, well, what is the reason for gravity, is a good one. So let's see how the model reacts to this. In this case, it didn't really go through a lot of deliberation. It had the answer ready and provided it as a fundamental force of nature that attracts the masses to each other. So it's a straightforward answer. Now let's discuss a little bit of what questions are best suited for reasoning models versus functioning models. We've seen a few examples of questions, spell something backwards or why is the sky blue, but there are a couple of differences. Uh, you can get some reasonably good answers for these questions from functional models, but why is DeepSeq R1 so different than everything else? And the reason for that is because A, it's open source and B, has a phenomenal ability for reasoning. In other words, breaking down larger questions, for example, questions that require multiple steps to come up with the solution into smaller chunks and then amazingly combine them into one cohesive answer. So that's what makes DeepSeq R1 different than other models, but there are some shortcomings too. It's not a solution to all problems. Reasoning models are not great for answering current questions. So for example, if you are doing product research or you are doing financial research or you need current data, a functional models like GPT-40, especially GPT-40 Mini, with its inexpensive price model, as well as its fast performance, it's probably a better suited model for those kind of questions. The second area is that reasoning models as of right now do not support function calling and structured outputs. So all you can expect is textual outputs. There are ways around that, and I talk about this in a different video. The link will be in the description. But as of right now, reasoning models are mostly suited for solving big problems and not really getting information about either current events, news, financial data, other fields that require more structured data or would require the agent or the model to have access to certain tools. So the model is a great model. You can use it for a lot of reasoning questions, but there are limits to its usability. DeepSeq R1 with Pydentic AI is a great combination that overcomes some of those limitations that I just talked about. If you combine DeepSeq and you combine it with Pydentic AI structured approach, then you can create a network of multiple agents where you have both functional and reasoning agents working in the same graph to get the results that you need. I highly recommend checking out this video. If you're interested in following along, the GitHub repo also provides a number of working practical examples on both DeepSeq and Pydentic AI. The link will be in the video description. If you need support or just want to connect with like-minded AI developers, consider joining the Discord server at the URL above. The link will also be in the video description. Now let's move on to our summary. R1 from DeepSeq is a powerful reasoning model that can be used in a local setup. The small footprint and high reasoning capabilities make DeepSeq an ideal choice for everyday use. LM Studio provides an easy way to get started with DeepSeq R1. I hope you've enjoyed this short tutorial and you learned something new. If you like this type of content, please consider becoming a member and giving the video a thumbs up. Thank you and see you in the next one.